Welcome back to the channel. There's a new op-ed out now in The Guardian. That's the UK-based newspaper that's been one of the worst purveyors of bad COVID narratives this entire pandemic. This is the gem of an op-ed. It's entitled, Don't Believe Those Who Claim Science Proves Masks Don't Work. Don't believe them. They're lying to you. Cochrane, they're lying to you when they say the evidence shows no benefit and we should have done randomized trials. They're lying to you, Cochrane. All right, let's get into this op-ed. This is the opening gambit. Many studies show that masks work, and they work best when everyone wears a high-quality one to protect each other. Masks are magnificent. They're, ma they're magnificent. They're magnificent, a magnificent intervention. Who wrote this, Donald Trump? No, this is a, obviously a ridiculous thing to say. It links to the CDC's analysis, which pools good studies with absolutely useless, confounded observational studies reaching the conclusion that masks are good. It looks at mechanistic studies, which are useless because masks aren't just a physical intervention. People who say physics proves masks work, that's as silly as saying chemistry proves the drug works. You need to do human trials. You need to do studies in the real world. Masks, I don't think they're magnificent. Even the believers in masks have to think they have an effect size of about five or 10%. Nobody could possibly think they're magnificent. Anyway, let's put this aside. Cochrane looks only at well-done randomized controlled trials. They're looking at the best of the literature, and they find that that is a sobering look, and it yields a null result. So masks don't work. No one's proven that they do work. They don't work. People quibble, and they say the absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. They don't make that same argument for ivermectin, bone marrow transplant for women with breast cancer, and a host of other medical therapies that we have abandoned because nobody could prove that they worked. We don't keep running studies until the lower bound of the confidence interval crosses one, okay, in the bad direction. We don't, that's not how we do things. We abandon things, often with a point estimate that is null or unfavorable and a confidence interval that crosses one. And that's the same thing here. Something that should be abandoned unless somebody comes up with some miracle trial. And I know they won't because there's not ongoing. This is what the author writes. The analysis is flawed because it compares apples to oranges. The paper mixes together studies that were conducted in different environments with different transmission risks. It also combines studies where masks were worn part of the time with studies where masks were worn all of the time. And it blends studies that look at COVID-19 with studies that look at influenza. This is what we in the business like to call a meta-analysis where inevitably you pool studies that are not exactly the same because if they were exactly the same it would be one study this is a meta-analysis of studies and you know a situation where people recommend masks with different transmission risks where some people wear it all the time and some people wear it part of the time that situation is called life itself life itself it's actually mirroring life itself life itself and in life itself some people wear the mask to this day to avoid covid 19 and some wear it to avoid influenza and rsv that's what they do it for that's what the media would have you believe so these are not limitations of the study the fact that people weren't fully compliant that's life that's the reality so we want to know is a mask policy and recommendation with the usual compliance actually beneficial and so I don't know what this means, actually. Yeah, that's a meta-analysis. Of course, they're going to pull things that aren't exactly the same. Different transmission risks. The risk of COVID transmission goes up and down. It has sort of a periodicity to it. It has some peaks and valleys. But you all recommended masks throughout the whole damn thing. I didn't hear you quiet down when it went down. And uh, except for maybe one or two commenters who actually use the community spread to guide their masking behavior, which also is unproven. But most of you just said, wear it nonstop. And actually, this author believes we ought to wear it for the rest of our lives, pretty much. Out of the 78 papers analyzed in the review, only two actually studied masking during the COVID-19 pandemic. And both of those found that masks did protect the wearers from COVID-19. Is that right? I recall Dan Mask was a negative randomized control trial in the Annals of Internal Medicine. And I recall the Bangladesh study what purported to be a positive randomized trial, but the reanalysis chopped it up to bits where it found only a 20 case difference across this mega hundreds of thousands of person randomized control trials, and it also found evidence of concealment bias. That concealment, the moment of randomization, which arm you were gonna be in, was not shielded from the participants, and thus they knew in the mask arm they were more likely to get a freebie and more people enrolled in that arm. And that actually violates a core tenant of randomization, which I explained on my prior video on randomized control trials. These studies are drowned out by the greater number of studies on influenza included, where the benefit of masking is harder to detect because it's far less contagious virus than COVID-19. 
okay, uh, they're not drowned out because they're actually weighted by the sample size in the meta-analytic estimate. So <laughs> anyway, but, um, not, and neither are they both positive. And the one you're hanging your hat on, the Abelix study, has this huge bias in it. And when you look at the totality of the literature, I think it's pretty clear. It's null. It don't work. And that's what Cochrane says. The clear problems with the study did not stop loud voices from exaggerating its findings on large platforms. Brett Stevens proclaimed in the New York Times that mask mandates did nothing with any lessons be learned. That Brett Stevens article was 100% correct. And Tom Jefferson, first author of the Cochrane paper, asserted in an interview, there's just no evidence that masks make any difference, full stop. That is an accurate summary of what he found. I don't know if that's exactly accurate. There's no evidence that masks make any difference. That's what the review of the best available evidence suggests. Neither are objective or reliable sources. Oh, no, 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 no. Anyone who disagrees with you is not objective. They're unreliable. Stevens once called global warming mass hysteria and claimed climate science has been discredited. Uh, I don't know if he said that or not, but either way, it's tangential or unrelated to his concurrent argument, and it is what we call ad hominem, against the man and not actually against the argument. Jefferson works for the Brownstone Institute, a COVID-19 misinformation group that's powered by dark money. <laughs> Ridiculous, so over the top. Um, one, my understanding of the Brownstone Institute is this one guy who used to be in a different libertarian think tank uh, moved out of that libertarian think tank and he made his own little foundation. Number two, uh, they like to publish articles and disseminate them to their audience and they've reprinted some of my articles. Last I checked, I got zero dollars and zero cents for those reprinting. But when somebody says, hey, we want to take your article and let more people read it, Who's going to say no? What do I want? Fewer people to read my article? Of course I want. Yeah, go ahead. Send it to your listserv. Tom Jefferson, I'm pretty sure, does not work for the Brownstone Institute. He probably had a piece he wrote that they amplified on their network. And he, last I checked, lives in Rome and has been doing this for 20 plus years. Last I checked. And it's not so... I, and he certainly... You, we may all read an article on any website that we don't agree with and then make it a misinformation group and who knows what they mean by powered by dark money. The darkest of monies. <laughs> Those with vested interests are sowing doubt about the science of COVID-19 protection. Who Actually, but this is a real interesting question to me. Who has the vested financial interest against the mask? Who's out there and they're like, you know, I'm going to go all short on 3M. <laughs> no, I mean, you can certainly have people profiteering from selling useless masks, but I don't know anyone who's profiteering from not selling the useless mask. They're using the same disinformation playbook as the tobacco companies. Well, that was a little bit different because they actually make a lot of money from selling tobacco. Who's making money from not selling masks? The fossil fuel industry. Again, they make money. And the anti-vax movement. I, I, uh, the anti-vax movement. All right. I don't know what they're up to, but okay. Vested interests. Tom Jefferson. I'll tell you what. He went short on 3M a long time ago. That's the secret. <laughs> the overselling of the Cochrane study is a classic example of cherry picking. No, it's not. Cochrane is a systematic review of randomized trials. It's the opposite of cherry picking. Your essay is cherry picking. That's, that's the definition of cherry picking, where biased groups highlight a subset of data that supports their position. That's what you're doing because you're the mask believer. That's what you're doing while ignoring the larger pool of evidence that disagrees with them. That's what you all have been doing. You've been ignoring the randomized, the highest quality evidence we, the way, the Cochrane Review is not a novel method. It's the way we analyze blood pressure pills or balloon pumps or every other intervention in medicine. Only for masking, you want some sacrosanct, you want the, the tried and true method to be abandoned, and you want to use your own method where you get to highlight anecdotes of a hairdresser in Marin County. I mean, you're the ones cherry picking. You have it exactly backwards. Many direct studies in labs show that high quality masks reduce the number of viral particles. Yeah, when a mannequin wears it in an aerosol chamber. But the problem with the recommendation in the real world is people are not mannequins. If they were mannequins, they also wouldn't get SARS-CoV-2. They're real people and people don't do everything perfectly. That's why people who wear condoms sometimes still have kids. Nothing is done perfectly in the messy world of reality. And then the question is, are our masking policies, our masking recommendations actually improving outcomes the way they're actually achieved? And the answer is probably no, because Cochrane is soberingly negative in the best randomized studies where, if anything, they're incentivized to do it as good as they're going to do it. In the real world where it's being used as a chin strap all over the place, it's going to have less effect than in the pivotal randomized studies. These disinformation tactics, they love these words, disinformation, misinformation. 
Sometimes people just disagree, man. You don't have to always go misinformation. These disinformation, I think that's intentional misinformation because they've shorted masks and I don't know what they're doing. Okay, these disinformation tactics are successfully quashing public health policies. Actually, it's probably the other way around. Public health didn't abide by evidence-based medicine and that really hurt it. Policymakers are susceptible to bad fake arguments about masks because they are beholden to short-term corporate interests. But what company has a short-term interest in in going against mask. I mean, I don't see that logic. What, what companies out there, you know, here in the AMC movie theater family, we want to go anti-mask so we can get people in the theater. That doesn't make sense. I mean, wh what company, what corporation is is in the short term, whose short term interest is for people not to wear masks? Masks are a visible symbol that the pandemic is ongoing. That's why you embraced it. Because it's a visible symbol, not because it works. And politicians fear these reminders to stop people from consuming. Ah, uh, I see. So it's the politicians now. It's not the companies. But then why is it the politicians and the CDC who is appointed by Biden who still recommends the masks? Actually, and wouldn't wearing the masks maybe even increase people consuming because they go out more? I mean, I, I don't know. Okay, anyway, this logic is hard to hard to think through. It's easy to lie to those who want to believe. That's what I guess your essay is pretty much doing. Okay. As high levels of COVID-19 transmission persist over the long term, we need to prioritize policies that make society open and accessible to everyone. But you said it yourself. It's not going away. It's going to reach 93 to 98% zero prevalence. And then it's just going to start going over people over again and again and again for the next thousand years. So even if you think masks work, what is your end point? When are you going to wear it for? Until you get your fourth infection, then you can throw in the towel? And when COVID-19's IFR is dropping to be on par with all the other respiratory viruses, why are you going out of your way to mask now? Why didn't you do it in 1996 or 2006 or 2016? It's really illogical, don't you think? Masks remain a key solution. How does it, how does it remain a key solution? While masks alone can't single-handedly stop the pandemic because COVID spreads fast, exactly where masks come off and also where people wear masks as evident by the daily uh, testimony on Twitter of even though I did everything right, I still got COVID-19. Such as in households and social settings, masks can keep people safe in spaces where they wear them continuously, such as in hospitals and on public transport and in their bunker where they're going to live the rest of their lives. Okay. This doesn't mean that we don't need better studies on masks. This doesn't mean that we don't. In other words, we do. Okay. Double, I got it. We do. But I was the one who said that. You were the ones who criticized that point of view when I said we need randomized control. You said it couldn't be studied in randomized fashion because it's a parachute. And like all parachutes, it has no evidence of efficacy. No, it's not a parachute. At best, it had a very meager effect size. In science, we always seek more evidence. No, you don't. You actively and people on your side of the table actively thwarted ongoing efforts to conduct randomized studies. Better studies will help us implement more effective mask policies. Oh, you've already concluded it works, so we got to do better. There's much more we can learn about what messages and policies work best to encourage more people to wear masks. This is three years too late, man. <laughs> this is three years too late. Ain't nobody want to do it anymore. They've already thrown it away. They've already all had COVID twice. I mean, what are you talking about? More frequently wear them properly. Wear high quality masks like N95s. The uncomfortable one? Sure, got it. But we need to stop giving air to bad faith actors like Tom Jefferson. Let me tell you about Tom Jefferson. He's the worst of the worst. You know, he knew the, obviously he knew the pandemic was going to come. And he knew he was going to go against public health. This is really his long game, you know. He always wanted to go against public health. And what he decided to do was to basically sacrifice 30 years of his life and just conduct the most boring meta-analyses you could possibly imagine. Part of Cochrane collaboration, the most thankless job, and he just laid low because he knew that day was coming when the pandemic would hit and he would be able to go short 3M and then put out his little press release against a big mask and then he'd collect his big payday. That's, that's, that's his long haul. You really think that's the way it works? And everybody who's telling you the best available evidence is wrong are all dark money, conservative think tanks. Everything is an evil conspiracy. Doesn't it sound like splitting? Doesn't it sound like a very fragile worldview where you can't imagine that the real reason people think masks don't work is if you hold it to the exact same standard you would hold ivermectin or hydroxychloroquine or atenolol 
or any medicine or any device in medicine, that same standard, it fails that standard. And if it didn't call, have the word mask on that report and you just changed mask with the Tenelol and gave it to a thousand doctors, they would all say, this is pretty conclusive evidence that this thing don't work. The only reason you feel differently is because the one guy you really hate, Donald Trump refused to wear it. And the moment you saw him not doing it, you knew it had to be good. And it was a visible symbol and it is comforting. And you started leaning into it and you found those anecdotes of hairdressers in Marin County and you concocted some terrible low quality observational studies that purportedly supports your beliefs. Isn't that more likely to be the case? The will to believe is strong in human beings. It is that way. The same reason why throughout medicine, a lot of people believed in failed devices, failed drugs, failed therapies, because the will to believe is powerful. It's seductive to think a piece of cloth you cut from your heel of your sock will shield you from COVID-19. And maybe it's comforting to think it would also be a good thing to put on your two-year-old before you send him off to daycare because they need to work. Maybe that is comforting, but the truth is the best available evidence is soberingly negative. And I see people constantly arguing that it's wrong to say Cochrane shows masks don't work. That's wrong too, because you would say that about any other product with that kind of a conference interval and this kind of report from Cochrane, you would just say it doesn't work. You wouldn't equivocate. You wouldn't say the lower bound of the hazard ratio goes to 0.7, because if you were gonna do that, you could do that for ivermectin because the meta-analysis shows the similar lower bound hazard ratio. So I don't know what to say. It's really, captured the zeitgeist and the truth is the battle is lost i mean go out there and walk around look around the cdc director says there wasn't equipoise she was lying this report is this op-ed is of course terrible it says nothing of value like most of the guardians coverage throughout the pandemic nothing of value there are definitely media outlets that lean towards the left that's the lean of media and the left has embraced masks because Mostly one very notable conservative didn't embrace masks. And that's really what we're anchored into. And any objective look at the evidence would show it doesn't work. And so don't believe the scientist who would have you not believe the science, whatever the hell, whatever the hell title this. You can rest assured that the Cochrane Review is the way in which we evaluate medical evidence. You can rest assured that the evidence shows it doesn't work colloquially for most things with evidence this poor. We also go the additional step and say it just don't work. We don't equivocate and say we have failed to show it does work, but the absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. We don't typically say that. We're only saying it in this case. Some people are probably because they think some people's feelings just can't take the, the bold truth. And myself and Ian Liu and Jonathan Darrow, we published a meta-analysis that basically shows, or a systematic review that basically shows the exact same thing as the Cochrane Report about a year ago. It's going to come out in the peer review literature soon. So you like this video, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, comment, leave a message below. I'm working on a few things. Vinay Prasad's Observations and Thoughts Substack. I'm working on the Sensible Medicine Substack. Those both aim to be broad general medical interest and general topics kind of substacks developdrugs.substack.com, the drug development letter, which is going to get into most of my favorite topics, cancer drug development, drug development, drug approval, what I've been doing for 20 years alongside evidence appraisal. Uh, you got the plenary session podcast, you got VPZD show, and you got this channel. So until next time.